I'm Bill, I'm an addict. Um, thank you, Greg, for what you did. Uh, you know, I now know true what I've been thinking for years that anonymity is probably the one tool that the one reason I'm sitting here the one reason I can talk into this thing and not be as afraid um, I came into uh, a fellowship five years ago five and a half years ago and they told me that I was different they told me that I was um, unique. They told me that I couldn't do what I did because I was in a wheelchair. And uh, that participated in my disease. I didn't use because God damn it I wasn't going to use. I was going to show them. But uh, somebody came up from Atlanta and uh, told, uh, mentioned Narcotics Anonymous in that clubhouse and uh, first of all they said we don't have addicts here and it went on and on and on and then um, as I went to the fellowship full of fear I was amazed they didn't focus on my they didn't focus on my differences they welcomed me they, they, in fact, every time I focus on my differences, they put it back on me. They said, it's something you have to work on. It's a spiritual principle that you have to work on. Quit, quit denying your disease. And um, I, I, like Robin, have never heard it put like that. And I want to thank you. My name's Bill, I'm an addict. Hi, Bill. Um, you know, there's a lot more to that fifth edition. And I, and I thought when I first came in, I grow and learn about the traditions by living. You know, and I, I was down in Florida. Uh, about a year and a half ago, in an area at that time that didn't have but two quote unquote maybe in any meetings. One was in a uh, treatment center, and this addict needed a meeting. And I, we walked into uh, the meeting, and there was people in chairs sitting around in a circle. And they had one person in the center of that circle, and they were telling him, you've got to do this, and you've got to do that. And if you don't, you know, that old confrontal, that old TC treatment type therapy. And I have one character defect when somebody or someone, uh, doesn't quite understand the spiritual principles of Narcotics Anonymous as they were told to me. I, I, I have this, um, my left hand goes up automatically without, uh, without thinking about it. And I shared, <laughs> I shared how it was given to me. And how it was given to me was, um, uh, First of all, every NA group has but one primary purpose. That's to carry the message. And I came in, they didn't care what I looked like, what color I was, who I was, what I was, what I was driving, how I was walking, how I wasn't walking. And I came in and they said, very simply, I was lucky. They said, if you want what we have to offer, then you want to do what we did to get it. And that was, that was 
Walk the 12 steps of Narcotics Anonymous. That's the message of recovery. Not dances, not um, service boards and committees, thank God, sometimes. Uh, but the 12 steps, all the other things are a byproduct or a, a gift, if you will, of the primary message that recovery from addiction is available if you do these certain things. And I walked around for years. I'm like Dutch. I knew more about the traditions for the first couple of years in this fellowship than I did about the steps. And I got close to certain people who knew um, a lot, and I listened. And then there were certain people um, told me it's about time you stop. It's about time you stop worrying about you, other people, and start working on yourself. Here's the steps. Work them. And that was the same message that I got when I came into Narcotics Anonymous from the same man who has 12, who has about 10 years clean in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Uh, but I wasn't, well, I wasn't ready to listen at that time. And that is the only, that is the only primary message Narcotics Anonymous has. It's not, you know, it's not, let's get dressed up on a Friday night and put two tons of perfume on and makeup and go, go to a meeting and just after the meeting get together and play whatever. You know, that's spreading the disease. But very simply, and I'll be quiet, if you want what we have to offer, if you like what I do, if you like what I do, not what I say, and ask me how I got it, and I'll tell you. It's 12 steps. Thanks. <laughs> My name is Bill. I'm an addict. Uh, uh, I have a question. I see in this room so far two board of trustee members. I have a question for the board directly. Uh, NA is such a, uh, or never endorse uh, any outside facility, you know, whatever. Uh, there is a club, and I use the term loosely, um, of which I used to be a member. And I haven't participated in that club since for like three months. It is my understanding and my opinion and my uh, interpretation of the Sixth Tradition that uh, we can't um, put any logos on t-shirts, uh, on the back of uh, cut-off jean jackets, uh, and ride right down the road on our 10 speeds. Uh, or we can't put any logos anywhere. Um, we, as a club again, I consider it to be a gang now because it's practicing the disease instead of recovery, uh, requested direct uh, interpretation of this issue by the Board of Trustees, and they, the answer they gave us was, well, we uh, don't really endorse it, but we don't really, you know, it's all, it's all right. And I'm going to say something. There were three Board of Trustee members here. I forgot Mike. Um, that's bullshit. You know. That's fucking bullshit. If it's alright for you to sit up and tell me 
well, you can't wear something on your back, but I can because I'm whatever. That's exclusive, and that's uh, isolationism, and that's and it kills people because I've seen it in my area, and that's why I've turned my colors in. And I I won't uh, I won't bad mouth it because an Alcoholics Anonymous tells me to look at myself before I look at anybody else. But I won't endorse it. You know. And that means I won't wear my t-shirts in public. That means I won't wear my any necklace. You know, I have this girlfriend back in the area that says, well, whenever somebody comes up to me and tells me that, uh, What's the NA stand for? I said, never alone. And that's neat, and that's cool, and that's, you know, whoop de do. But Narcotics Anonymous is getting too big, thank God, to let it be passed off as the NA logo is nice ass, or never alone, or whatever. You know, they people know Narcotics Anonymous, and when you ride down the street on your Harley, doing wheelies, or wear your NA t-shirt, and walk into a bar, and do this, you, you're taking the fellowship of Narcotics Anonymous into that bar, on that bike, and you're taking my life into that bar, on that bike. Uh, I'd like to share some experience I had dealing with the seventh tradition, uh, Recently, we came in the possession of a copy machine. Our area service was somebody donated a copy machine. And um, I personally was that I didn't feel right about it. So I went to... Uh, different workshops and different talked to a couple board of trustee members and shared with a couple of people learned being one of them and he uh, along with other people said simply read the tradition and don't interpret it don't try to manipulate it don't try to con it don't try to justify it the tradition says we are self-supporting through our own contributions, declining outside, declining our all outside contributions. Uh, I went back to the area service and told them that uh, in order to accept that copy machine, we would have to pay the fair market value. And we went through all kinds of uh, justifications and rationalizations. And... Uh, as a result, our area is not accepting the copy machine. Because, uh, and that's just one, one, one more thing about how, how the traditions protect, like Larry says, me from myself. Why they're there. It's not something that somebody learns after 20 years of staying clean. They can, you know, now interpret the tradition. They're there because the group relies upon them. And without the group, I die. Thanks. Thank you, boys. My name is Bill. I'm an addict. Uh, on that issue, what do you do when somebody comes up in your face? Uh, we had a meeting start in Northern Virginia. The first meeting uh, in Northern Virginia. And uh, the treatment center, it was at a treatment center, and the treatment center tried to dictate and tell us how to run our meetings. And we said, fine, if you do that, it'll be an H&I meeting. 
you can handle it that way. But if it's an open meeting, they try to uh, ban certain people from the meeting. And this guy was a recovering addict who was running the facility. Um, I don't know what his recovery was, but that's beside the point. point. Uh, and what Greg was saying um, about the pound of prevention, um, it says, I have tools for my personal recovery. And if I use those tools, I, I, don't, I, shouldn't be, I shouldn't be placed in that position. I shouldn't place myself in that position. My sponsor says, and I love it dearly, he cuts through, he cuts through the bullshit. He said, if you don't want to get fucked, don't put yourself in that position. If you don't want to uh, get angry, uh, you know, and that's, that's difficult. The easiest thing for me to do is point fingers and run and yell and scream. But I have something today. I have something that I protect, that I, I am responsible for. And that, that word sticks in my throat, responsibility. But that, that's the uh, place of membership. That's the place of living today. The first tradition tells me that my personal recovery, my personal recovery depends on any unity. Our common welfare comes first. Without the any unity, the meaning place dies, and that's it. I die. So, um, as a member of Narcotics Anonymous, I don't, uh, I have, I have uh, cussed a guy out and walked out, and, uh, but I learned through my mistakes. I don't do it as much. Just like the 12 steps in my personal recovery, the 12 traditions act the same way. Thanks.